What's up guys, Justin here, and I'm going to briefly go over uh, jungle pathing for the preseason as certain things have changed, jungle EXP has changed, and the CS tracking numbers have changed. So when we think about jungling, we want to think about um, lane shoves. So when I say something like, oh, this lane shoves in, what I mean by that is, oh, uh, the, the, you know, the blue side mid laner is going to shove in the red side mid laner, right? This is how it looks, and that means that uh, you have things like, oh, well, this laner can move first, or this laner can move into the jungle first, or, you know, the top laner can move first, and all these these various uh, types of movements coming out from the laner, right? So what you have to do as a jungler, uh, what you've always had to do as a jungler is judge these lane matchups and judge your jungle matchup, right? So uh, you have a couple things to take into consideration. Um, whether you win the jungle 1v1, whether you lose the jungle 1v1, and you have to think about the proximity laners winning or losing. Now, winning or losing doesn't mean that, oh, I can, uh, the laner can go in and kill them. Um, it just means that they're shoving and can rotate first, right? It do, um, if they're going to lose the 1v1, then that's different, right? But in general, you don't know if a lane situation is going to be a win or loss on a flip, right? In a situation like Jace versus Maokai, Jace probably wins. But for what we're talking about, we're talking about who gets the shove. Whoever gets the shove gets to rotate first, right? If, uh, you know, if... This lane is going to shove in because this blue player is playing Jace, and he can shove in the wave very, very strongly. Then that means he can take an aggressive position over here. That means this player has to play under turret. The Maokai player has to play under turret, which means that the Jace player has first movement into the red, first movement into the Krugs sometimes, and first movement into the Raptors. So when we talk about winning a lane, what we mean is able to push and not lose the when we went in lane at the same time, being able to move into the jungle first. So what we have to do is figure out where we stand. So the best way to do this is to take into account real world examples. So if I pull up OPGG and let's just uh, let's just pull up um, top games right now. Leaderboards and why is PUBG Battlegrounds on here? And all right, that's number one right now, right? So when we pick up this first game, what are we looking at, right? We have to figure out what's going on in the state of the game. Well, top lane looks like it's um, Maokai versus Cannon, right? So let's say uh, Maokai versus Cannon. Where do we expect Maokai versus Cannon to be? And let's put Maokai on the blue side here, right? So if we expect Maokai to be on the blue side and Cannon to be here, we have a clear identification that Maokai is going to uh, push in the Cannon. Or a cannon is going to push in the Maokai. Oh, it's a cannon on this side. Cannon's on blue. Maokai's on red, right? So Maokai's on red. Maokai's going to probably play under turret. Cannon's on blue. Cannon's probably going to go here, right? This isn't how the lane starts off, but this is how the lane will end up being within the first few minutes, right? So we know this wave is going to shove, which means that cannon has first movement into the Krugs, into the red, and into the Raptor camp, right? Now you might say, oh, well, Maokai does have defensive movement into the Krugs, right? This is true, right? Um, Kennen has to go around this wall while Maokai can run right away. But the reason why Maokai doesn't want to run is because he's put to a decision. So, you know how in lane phase when um, a minion is getting low and you can choose to auto attack it, but you realize that if you do auto attack it, you might get harassed from the other player, right? Because you can't simultaneously auto the other champion while autoing the minion, right? This happens a lot in bottom lane. This is sort of the same thing. Uh, Maokai has to make a proactive decision. Do I go over here and defend my Krug camp? Or do I CS under turret, right? Because if you go over here to defend and the lane's pushing in, you're going to lose all this gold and EXP under turret, which is arguably more important than the Krug situation, right? So Cannon puts Maokai in a bind here by being able to push. And if Cannon moves to red and both junglers are equal, right? The, the blue side jungler is moving in and the red side jungler is over here then it's going to be a 2v1 without taking into consideration the mid-situation. And Maokai's put in a bind. Maokai can't do anything in this situation. Even if it's at Krugs, Maokai can come over here, but one, they're probably going to lose a 2v2 because Kennen's the ranged spacing champion while Maokai is the melee champion. And two, Maokai's already putting an innate risk on it by sacrificing all this gold and EXP that Kennen shoved into the turret 
with the minions to go defend the Krugs. So really, this is a, a losing play for Maokai, right? This is the weak side. This is probably going to be the weak side without taking into account the mid laner for the red team. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the junglers last. We see Malzahar versus Azir, right? So Malzahar versus Azir is very interesting because Malzahar is a champion that can shove, while Azir is also a champion that can shove. Well, you look at the comparable shoves, right? So what does Malzahar do? Well, Malzahar kind of auto attacks, ease, uh, drops a couple Ws once he hits level two, and then uh, that's how Malzahar gets a shove. But Azir has a stronger shove level one. Right? W and then Q. And the time it takes Malzar to shove in the early game is longer than the time it takes Azir to shove in the, in the early game. And you just know this by playing the matchup, right? And watching the matchup and learning the matchup. So if Azir is on the uh, red side this time, that means this is going to shove in this way, right? It's going to shove towards them, right? So what does this mean? This means that Azir has first move, right? That means Malzahar is the one playing under turret. And Azir is the one with the first move into the jungle, and into this jungle, and into this position, and into this position, right? This is just this is just how it goes. And so now we have an interesting dynamic, right? Because when we look at the top dynamic, oh, well, this is going to be the weak side for the red side. No, wait. Now, Azir can come defend. So to clean it up a little bit, Kennen moves first, right? Simply put, Kennen moves first. Kennen has the right move. But Azir moves first, right? So now we're having a situation where it's Kennen versus Azir without looking at the jungle situation, right? Let's assume Ma uh, Maokai doesn't move, right? Because it's bad for Maokai to move. It's really fundamentally bad for Maokai to move because you're giving up CS for a situation that you don't know the result in when you could have just conceded a little bit of this and guaranteed uh, a risk equal trade, right? So this is no longer, like, this is the weak side for red team from the top side perspective, but it can be a strong side from the mid lane perspective. So let's just pick up the jungle matchup right now, right? It's Shivana versus Ezra. Ezra has a clear win in this matchup, right? So Ezra has a clear win in the jungle 1v1. Uh, the reason why Ezra has a clear win is because one, he's ranged, two, he has multiple low cooldowns and can space out Shivana. Uh, this is just something you learn from being able to identify how the matchup works. So now you have a strong jungle matchup. The jungler actually is stronger towards the red, right? So how we can put this on the map is we can say that, oh, the jungler is aggressive. The jungler is allowed to be aggressive, and this jungler has to be defensive. Um, the positions are just to re uh, represent how they're going to move, right? So now we look at the situation, right? Top lane shoves in. Mid lane shoves uh out, I guess, towards the blue side, and then jungler Ezreal has a stronger invade. So we look at the power dynamics, right? Mid is stronger than mid, jungle is stronger than jungle, top is stronger than top here, right? But here's two players, one player and the second player in the mid. And top lane only has one strong player, right? So what's going to happen here is that if Ezreal invades, if Ezreal goes into the side, and Azir supports, you have the two players, right? Versus the two players that can defend, or the really the one player that can defend, which is Kennen, right? Shivana concedes the situation since Shivana concedes the 1v1 versus Ezra, right? So really, this entire area is Ezreal's, based on the mid and top dynamic. Because this side is Ezreal's, this side by default is also Ezreal's, right? Because he can defend his own, because he can invade, he can obviously defend his own jungle, right? So Shivana's put in a little bit of a bind. What does Shivana do here, right? Well, Shivana, this isn't her jungle. So we have to look at the pathing she can take here. So now we look at the bottom side. Varus, Leona uh, versus Jin, Sona, right? So the first thing we see is that um, Leona versus Sona is a situation where Leona is considered a sometimes hard counter to Sona in killability. Um, but... For a general reason, if the Sona plays properly, then the Sona Jin is going to shove in the Varus Leona um, on the grounds that there are two ranged being able to auto attack multiple times, right? Um, additionally, Jin Q comes up on a lower cooldown than Varus uh, E or Q. The shove in is pretty standard here, so the AD and support are going to play back here. And now we have 
a setup that's really, really weak for Shivana, right? So only winning lane matchup is going to be top lane for the Shivana side. Um, and Ezreal can move in here. Mid lane shoves in. Bot lane shoves in. And because mid and bot are shoving in, Ezreal also controls this side, right? So all the sides are towards Ezreal. This is a losing early game setup. This is pretty standard. Now you might ask, oh, well, you know, the AD and support can just roam. Even if they get shoved into it and they concede the CS, they could roam. Sure. But then what does the red team just do? The red team is like, okay, this AD player and the support player are roaming, right? We don't have to go aggro. We don't have to go hyper aggro onto their red buff or anything when we're trying to do an invade steal. We don't have to do anything here. We can just play passive. We can. We don't have to move all the way into here. We can just play it over here. We can just play it over here. We can play it really, really safe. So if they decide to defend their jungler, they're allowed to do that. But we're just going to take the advantage of the CS, right? We don't have to do anything too progressive. We can poke from over here. We can uh, you know, zone out the mid laner from over here. We can drop wards over here, over here. We can do so many things, right? They don't have to overcommit. They don't have to go all in. In the situation they just have to gain micro advantages right you're they're gonna lose five cs here they're gonna lose some exp here we're gonna hit six here that means we're gonna have dragon control first that means all these different things which is why winning lanes are so so strong so a couple of you have asked okay so what happens when you know let's say you're the shivana versus the ezra in this situation what can you do well the first thing i'd recommend you to do is to maximize jungle efficiency at the level one marker um, so if we look at the situation when the game starts, where's the situation where the game starts? Everything is technically neutral when the game starts, right? The jungler doesn't know where the jungler's going to be. Mid lane's relatively equal. Lane hasn't started, right? There is no lane push advantage when the game starts because there are no lanes yet. But as soon as the lane begins at 1.30 now, you're going to start losing the advantage. So what you want to do as the Shivana player is you want to maximize the amount of gold that you can get from one side of the jungle. And you want to trade. You want to attempt to trade jungles. So here's why. Um, you're not going to be able to get all of your jungle versus a good Ezreal abusing this with good laners. So you're going to think about where can I get the most value from? And if you're going to start in your own side of the jungle, um, Okay, so first I'd say that you could invade, right? If you do some type of invade, then you can uh, flip the situation, right? Because one, if they're doing... So invades are like rock, paper, scissors. So you know when um, everybody does uh, five-point position, right? The top laner watches here. Top laner watches here. The jungler watches here. The jungler watches here. Mids watch mid. Uh... ADs or supports watch, watch over here. Something like this, right? Five point position, right? So this is like the rock formation, right? This is the most standard formation. But what beats rock? Paper, right? So paper is going to be uh, a position that aggresses onto this. So what if everyone just went over here? What if everyone invaded at the top side of the map, right? Actually, this is more like paper. All right, for the sake of the analogy, paper is the defensive play, right? Paper is like the stop defensive play, right? Stop, don't come into us, but then you run scissors. Scissors is invading, right? Scissors is an aggressive uh, assassin-like move. You're invading, right? Well, now what are you going to do? Well, this top laner has to back out now, and you're going to try and get vision over here and over here, and you're going to try and take these top camps, right? The clear move is for the mid laner, the AD, and the support to come over here and swap, right? So you open scissors, they open paper. So now you're just going to go for a jungle swap potential, right? This helps out Shivana immensely. Why? Because one, they can't defend the side of the jungle because they open paper and they're not going to take a 5v2, right? That's just dumb. Uh, you know, these members are on the bottom side of the map. They can't get here fast enough. So you've already set down your vision and secure this area. So now what Shivana wants to do is Shivana wants to sweep this area, go back and sweep this area, right? That's ideally what Shivana wants to do. And Ezreal almost has no choice but to sweep this area. 
Now, Ezra can sweep this area, come over here and try and contest your area, but at worst, uh, you've already gone some of their camps. You might have to concede one or two here. That's paper versus scissor. Now, uh, rock in this case would be doing this. Is the level one counterplay, right? Rock is basically saying, I know you're going to play scissor. So I'm going to play rock and we're going to counter your level one, right? And this is like atrocious for when people run scissor. Because if people run scissor, then they're going to run into rock and they're going to get fucked over here. And it's almost GG, especially with the losing lane matchups, right? This is why everyone almost defaults to running scissor or paper. Because if you run paper, here's what happens. Let's say you run paper versus rock. So what happens now? Well, now it's like one minute in the game, the invade hasn't happened, and now this team that grouped up in a position doesn't know, right? They didn't know if you invaded through here. They didn't know if you invaded through here. They didn't know if you invaded through here. So paper ends up beating rock because they don't know if you're here. Now, now they're not sure if you're here. You had no idea they opened rock, but for all you know, the safest play for Ezreal now is to open on the top side, right? And then he has to look for the lane matchups or people walking in the lane, but you're not going to give them any information, right? You're not going to ask for a top, mid, or bot leash. You don't want to reveal any information. So now Ezreal doesn't know, right? Where Ezra, whereas Ezreal would have typically liked to invade here, he doesn't know if you started here or not. If you did start here, then this invade is a waste of time, then he should have went here. But if you did start here, or if you didn't start here, then he should invade. But he doesn't know, right? He has no idea because they opened rock. So the Ezreal team probably wants to open Scissor or or Paper. If the Ezreal team opens Paper, then he has a clear indication of where he should or shouldn't be at the start of the game and where he can or can't invade, right? So Ezreal's probably going to open Paper. And because you know Ezreal's probably going to open Paper, you sometimes have to open Scissor. You have to call an invade against Paper because the most beneficial uh, setup for a team that's already going to win based on the lane setup is going to be one that is unexpected, right? Ezreal has such a strong setup in the game that all he has to do is play defensively. He just has to look at the situation and say, all right, so I just have to see where I can invade to win the early game for my team. And then you as Shivana have to say, oh, well, I know that he ha all he has to do is take advantage of me, so we have to look for a situation to take advantage. So we should probably play Scissor. We should probably go for an invade. Now, th there can be levels of mind gaming, right? They could play Rock. They could you know, sweep in here. Uh, they could drop like one, two light wards and then come join you. But as a general rule, this is one of the best, not the best, but this is one of the ways that you can play around the situations of automatically losing the game due to invade uh, loss of tempo. What else can you do? Well, you can look to maximize jungle efficiency, right? Let's say that you open paper versus paper. Because it's solo queue and people don't actually listen when you call an invade. What's the second best thing you can do? Well, you can look to try and get as many camps as you can. Remember, you're going to have to concede camps, right? You're going to occasionally have to concede camps when Ezreal comes into your jungle and fucks up your shit. But what you can do is try and get as much off the map as you can, right? So if you start blue side, you might be able to get three camps before moving over to your red side. Now, let's say Ezreal invades your red side, right? Let's say... As you're walking over here, you, know, you meet Ezreal over here, and he's fighting your Raptors and your Red. That's fine, right? You can concede this. Maybe you just go over here. Maybe you just try and avoid the situation, right? Well, now Ezreal, maybe Ezreal realizes what you're trying to do. So he goes cross mid, and then he tries to you know, come to this situation, right? That's fine. Then maybe you go back to your Red side, right? And all this really does from a macro perspective is decrease the resources of both junglers, right? Who's stronger in the early? Ezreal. Who's stronger in the mid and late? Well, Ezreal does a lot of things in the mid and late, but Shivana also does a decent amount of things in the mid and late, right? But Shivana definitely loses early. So this stalls out the state of the game. You have ambient gold, you have uh, EXP catchback, or uh, EXP catch-up experience, and by stalling this game out, you put yourself in a situation where maybe all laners hit six while both junglers are four, or three even, but that's a situation that's beneficial to you as the Shivana player because Ezreal, one, is responding to you instead of putting in lane pressure, which is good, right? 
Because if your laners are already, you know, playing under turret with the Malzahar under TP, this is fine. Malzahar is okay playing this situation. Adian support, they're okay playing this support. This position, right? They can play it safe. They're not getting dove because you were watching Ezreal. Cannon's abusing the situation, sure, right? It's a neutral match because Ezreal's opting to neutralize it, right? If Ezreal's just following you around the map when you're trying to get some farm, that's fine. Just go somewhere else. That's completely okay. Now you might say, okay, well, what if Ezreal doesn't follow me, right? If Ezreal doesn't follow me, and when I meet him here, he takes these two, and I go over here, and I take those two, right? He did blue into invade, which is fine. Then we're just going to be trading, right? Is it good to trade with Ezreal? Sure. Why not? I'm getting farm. He's getting farm. I'm scaling. He had a better early. He's not abusing his early, right? So you put Ezreal in a bind. You put Ezreal in a bind where he wants to go even with you, but he thinks it's really efficient, right? It's really efficient to come over here, see the Raptors, ward this brush, and then just say, oh, well, Shivana left. I guess I should, maybe I should do this, or maybe I should do this. Hmm. I'm not unsure of which decision I should take. And a bad Ezreal player might. Go even with the Shivana, right? A good, good Ezreal player might go uh, d defend his own jungle. Or you can say a good Ezreal player might, you know, do something like camp camp into bot dive. There are so many variables here that I won't discuss. But what you really want to do is you want to figure out how to not fight the opposing jungler or the situation based on lane shoves while still impacting the map in terms of pressure, right? This isn't pressure that you're going to gank a lane. This is pressure that you're putting on the Ezreal to make a proactive decision. Whereas you're just okay with, you know, maybe if he gets 100 gold, I'll take 70, right? I'm okay with taking this loss a little bit, but I'm getting something in a losing matchup. I'm okay with that. That's how the matchup's supposed to be, right? You think in the mid lane matchup, Malzar goes into it and says, yeah, I'm going to get every single CS while Azir is also going to get every single CS. is probably being like, Okay, I'm going to get 5 out of 6 CSL wave. I'd like to get 6 out of 6, but I'm okay with 5 out of 6. I'll, I'm okay with losing the early a little bit for the advantage of having the teleport, for the advantage of playing Malzahar. Sure, why not? Uh, another thing you want to do is you want to try and prioritize your blue side a little more than you prioritize your red side in your first clear. Here's why. When you do a red side clear, you typically have a situation where... Um, you can only really take two of the camps, right? So let's say you open red side. So you open red or raptors, or you open small raptors, then red, then big raptor, or big or the entire raptor camp, then red, right? Well, then your jungle route is pretty much usually moving to the blue side to get through camps. This means that you're only getting two camps from this side, on average, when you do this type of route. I'm not saying that you can't do raptors, red, krugs, but typically, right? So what this means is that if Ezreal comes over here and invades your blue side, you're probably screwed out of your blue side, um, you know, most of these camps. But let's look at the alternative situation. So you got two camps and then you're getting zoned out here. You do the thing where you go cross map, he matches whatever, you play the game, right? You play the game where you guys, you know, figure out if he wants to trade with you or if he wants to defend his own jungle, right? But let's say you started on blue side. So you started on blue side. So you're doing blue, then gromp, into gromp, and then you're trying to do woes, right? And then Ezreal's probably going to invade your red. Well, this way you get three camps, right? You get three camps. You can contest here, sure, and then you can move back and you can play the game again. But three camps is way more than the two camps here. Um, now, some people might be looking at this and say, oh, well, why can't Ezreal just do red into blue invade? Well, by the time he does red into blue invade, you have done blue into gromp, right? So you've already gotten two camps. Now he might be able to contest you off the wolves, right? Basically what I'm saying is that red into walking is equal to the time for you to do blue into grump. Now he might contest you for the wolves, right? That's fine. You can concede the wolves. You can walk over here. By the time he wraps all the way around here, you, can have, you could have gotten this. If you see him here, you could have walked over here and contest his rafters that you know are up because you pressed tab because you only had... Uh, 4 CS with red buff, and then if he defends you here, look, you're already up uh, two camps on him, right? He did red, invaded, stopped your wolves, ran over here, you got raptors. So you got one, two, three camps. Well, he only got one camp. He didn't finish the wolves because obviously he wants to stop you from doing raptors, right? You're slowly winning this battle of attrition by, by this point in time, by getting two camps up on him. Let's say you started... This side, for example, right? Well, clearly, 
if you did Raptor Red, Red Raptor, whatever, right? And Ezreal invaded, he's already wasted his time because by the time you do two camps, you're already gone, right? So now he's over here. So let's say that he invades over here, right? So what happens? What happens on the side of the map? Well, you can't get any of these camps done because Ezreal's over here, right? If you did blue into invade into your blue or red into invade into your blue. And you can't do any of these camps now, right? You're only one camp up in this situation. Let's say you go over here. Okay, fine. You go over here. He goes over here. He matches. Same. Now you play the game. So when you started blue side, you got one extra camp based on the movement from wolves to raptors if you do blue romp into wolves. But if you started red side, you're not accessing this extra camp of crooks. The last thing I would say is that maybe you want to do a route like raptor red Krug's base, and then see what happens, right? If you do this type of a route, people don't expect this type of route. There's no real strong routes that end up with Krugs. Now, in a champion like Shivano, where you have to base early, maybe you do do this type of a route. And maybe it works out for you. But um, I wouldn't recommend this to... Th I mean, it throws them off, but I wouldn't recommend it as your go-to strategy. I would recommend what I just talked about as your go-to strategy. So can I tell you exactly how each lane matchup is going to go? I can tell you with like a 95% certainty that in this matchup, the Rumble shoves in the Camille, the uh, Syndra shoves in the Jace because Syndra can queue the backline, and the Ezreal Zareth shove in the Lucian Braum, right? So top gets shoved in by blue, but mid and bot get shoved in by red, and Nidalee beats Shivana. So Nidalee has an extremely strong invade um, compared to Nidalee because you have six spells or more spells compared to Shivana spells and you're a range champion. So you're already winning the mid and bot side from red. You're losing the top side. But it's okay because if we take a 3v3 in the top jungle mid versus top jungle mid, Rumble's going to roam first, but Syndra's going to roam first, but Nidalee's going to beat Shivana. So Nidalee wins all parts of the map, right? So because Nidalee wins all parts of the map, she just has to defend in the early game, right? So she's either going to play Paper, which is um, five-point defense, or she's going to play um, Rock, which is hard counter and invade. Shivana's play should probably be to play uh, Scissor and go for a five-man invade to secure one side of the jungle, potentially, right? As the game shakes out, um, Shivana is going to lose a majority of her camps. So if she didn't do an invade, she probably wants to start blue into Gromp, into looking at Wolf Contest if Nidalee goes for it. Nidalee wants to oppress the Shivana, and uh, she has open uh, sights to gank all lanes and take control of the game. This game probably should have been won by the Ezreal side, but ends up not. Result doesn't matter, right? This is just how early game lane setup goes. So I highly recommend you guys learn about early game lane setups, early game jungle setups, what this means for invades, how you should be doing jungle routing. And for those of you that ask, oh, what do I do when I get invaded? Well, this is some of the things that you do when you think that you could get invaded, right? Number one, identify that you could have get, could get invaded and run a scissor type strategy. Number two, get stat efficiency from your blue side if you didn't do an invade. Number three, put the other jungler to decision whether or not they want to play a low econ game where you're just following each other around the map or a trade-off game where uh, you're going to one side to trade off less resources than they're getting, but they're okay trading off, right? So that's going to be it. Thank you guys for watching.